So I've been playing a lot of Zelda lately, and the core theme in the game, or many of the games, is instruments and songs. And you collect these certain instruments or certain songs as you progress in the game to ultimately defeat Ganon and save the princess, right? And it got me thinking, is there magic in music? Or is there is songs sort of like spells? And then it got me thinking about all the different songs and, and music that we all listen to on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's undeniable that music does something to us emotionally. It, it like wakes something up inside of our soul. No matter what genre of music you listen to, it, it, it does something to us, right? And it, it made me think of the myth of uh, the sirens, you know, mermaids basically, who lived in the ocean and they would sing to sailors and lure them to their doom basically. And how that myth, uh, there, there must be some kind of truth to that myth, right? And in the Silmarillion, Tolkien, his creator god, Eru, creates the entire world with song. And he creates these other mystical beings who also sing with him and sing the song. And then the Satan-like character, Melkor, he kind of spins it and sings his own song. And so there's so many different threads I'm trying to pull here, but there must be something deep within songs that does something to us as humans, right? Now, I'm by no means a scientist, but I kind of studied up on how sound works, and it vibrates through the air, right? It, it hits molecules and kind of vibrates throughout the air, the air, and it hits our eardrums, and it even vibrates our e eardrums. So to me, sound is sort of like energy. So it's this energy that's being produced and, and um, given out, basically, and it hits us in a way that it even vibrates our eardrums. And to me, I don't think it stops there. I think it goes into our minds and really our entire bodies and our souls and kind of vibrates in a way in, in our whole being. I mean, think about it. Have you ever heard of a song or, or one of your favorite songs that you just feel it in your bones? And maybe it's the first time you've even heard it and you can't help but like tap your toe. And even when it gets to the chorus or the second chorus, you kind of catch yourself singing along because it's so catchy. I think that music wakes something up inside of us, deep inside of us. And if you look hard enough, all music worships something. I mean, that's why music was invented and created was to worship God, basically. And so nowadays, if you really look hard enough on any genre of music, it's going to be worship something. It's going to be praising something, whether that's pop, rock, country, rap, whatever it is. Now, the downfall of that, most of the time, it's praising or worshiping something not that great. Usually it's it's money or fame or love or lust or or partying or, or anything like that. And that's usually what the mainstream media or the mainstream music is all worshiping. Now, most music captivates us, right? It takes us on this journey of the song. And, and there's a lot of stories in songs too. And it captivates us in a way that nothing else does, almost as if a spell would. Now, I know that sounds a little crazy, but if you really think about it, that's what it's doing. It's If, if it's for the, the wrong reasons, nefarious reasons, it's taking you captive and kind of like shifting your thought process in your mind to the viewpoint of the song, right? The reason for this video is to just see music as more than just noise, as more than just a pastime to kind of put in your ears while you're driving or working out or anything like that. In this day and age, we can never be too careful. And so to me, we need to get into why the song was written, why the music was written, the intentions behind the song that the artist wrote it. Because when we listen to a song, despite our best attempts, no matter what song it is, we find ourselves catching along and, or singing along with this lyric and the melody. And we, when we listen to a song, we're agreeing with whoever wrote it. Now, there's a lot of old rock songs that I think all of us can agree when we listen to them, we can't help but sing along to the lyrics, right? I think it's because there's an undeniable fact that there's there's this beauty in music. There's there's all sorts of instruments. There's a singer, um, especially when you get into classical music. There's maybe a hundred people all playing together, harmonizing, and it's it's just a really beautiful thing. And if we hear a song from like way back in the day, grow, maybe a song that our parents listened to growing up, or a song back um, from a certain summer that we can all remember, we we will never forget those lyrics. It, it like burrows deeply inside of our memory. And even beyond that, I think if we all hear a certain song from our past, it brings up a certain memory. Um, 
that this song is associated to. I, I can think of a couple different artists that if I listen to them, no matter what their song is, it, it kind of takes me back to a certain time or a certain memory. And this is a nerdy channel, so uh, if if ever I hear the "Hey, listen" from Ocarina of Time or the Final Fantasy Victory, if you're like me, the, like does something to you. It maybe maybe you remember like a certain point uh, where you beat a certain boss in one of the Final Fantasies. So listening to music is opening a doorway. Basically, we have three gates: our ear gate, our eye gate, and our mouth gate. And when we listen to something, we're allowing things into our ear gate, no matter what music it is, preaching, sermons, podcast, whatever it is, we're, we're opening that gate and allowing things into our, into our mind, into our heart, into our soul. When, like I said earlier, when we sing along with the lyrics, we're agreeing with those lyrics, whatever they may be, whether good or bad. And the Bible tells us frequently that our words have power. And I, I've heard that all growing up from my mom, that our words have power and that the power of life and death are in the tongue, right? And I think the, the main reason behind that is when God spoke the world into existence, he used his word, his, his breath, right? And later, he, when he made Adam, he breathed that breath into Adam. And now that we are sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, we have that breath inside of us, that power of creation, basically. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we all have to listen to Caleb. I personally don't listen to that because it's just too repetitive. There's there's lots of different music you can listen to, but I just want to ask you: What are the thoughts in, or or what do those songs that you listen to take your thoughts? What do those lyrics do to you? And the songs we listen to focus our thoughts and minds on whatever they're singing about. And we're told elsewhere in the Bible to take every thought captive. So let's be proactive with that verse and be aware of what we're putting into our lives, putting into our ears. The things you listen to either draw you closer to God or further away from God. And songs declare the most raw emotion inside of us, what our hearts desire, what we really, really want, that sort of thing. And in the Psalms, um, throughout the Psalms, there's 150 of them. There's so many different emotions. It's not just all praise and worship songs. There's so many emotions that David goes through. And, you know, so whatever you're going through, a lot of times we'll listen to songs that uh, when we're in this certain mind frame or in this certain mood, I guess, we want to listen to that song because we're hurting or we're, we're frustrated or we're angry or anything like that. In the end, are you going to sing all of the ten, top 10 charts or are you going to sing holy, holy, holy to the one who sits on his throne in glory? I don't know about you, but I'm going to start practicing now.